Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to talk about how to make some procedural muzzle flashes, because in a CG Matter video I showed you how to make the smoke puffs, so I guess now we need muzzle flashes. And here are some of the results that you can make. Um, you know, these aren't the highest quality, you can mess with the technique I'm about to show you, but you can see how this at least gets you a nice start. And the nice thing about this, you know, using this approach is, again, it's procedural, so we can make as many as we want, and we don't have to pay for them online. But if you try to search muzzle flashes, you know, you're doing your first action movie in After Effects and you need muzzle flashes, you just go to Google Images and you're like, oh, this is fine. But honestly, it's just a low resolution in a lot of the cases. Um, sometimes they didn't even remove the background, etc. And generally, you're going to have to pay for these. So let's make them for free. So open up Blender. And generally, everything we're about to do is a lot of uh, procedural texturing, shading has a lot of nodes, so if you're not comfortable with that, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard video, but suck it up, maybe, and just try to follow along as best as you can. And I will try to explain every step uh, without doing the whole fast process. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna delete everything, then go to full screen so nobody gets annoyed, and we are gonna add in a plane. And the basic idea is we're gonna do all this procedural texturing, or shading, and we're gonna put this on the plane, and then we're just gonna have a camera above it, uh, facing down and then just render that as an image. It's how we're going to export these. So shading workspace We're going to look at this from up above again. We're just making 2d textures So there's no need to you know look at it from any kind of different perspective 2d is fine For the rendering EV is fine for this You know there's no need for cycles which makes it even faster and you can even go down to one sample if you wanted to um, I don't see why you would or wouldn't because it's pretty fast so it doesn't matter um, so let's go to rendered view so again we're using eevee and for a material we are just going to get rid of this principled bsdf we're not doing anything with bsdf so we're just doing straight emission meaning that there's no lighting that we need to care about we're going to do all that mathematically so what we're going to do is hit is this i i guess i should go over the basic workflow before i confuse everybody with a bunch of uh, node math what we're going to do is we're going to make a circle. We are going to stretch that circle into an oval or an ellipse, whatever you want to call it. We're then going to take that ellipse and distort it using a bunch of noise, which makes it look something like this, maybe. You know, you can see how it's an oval, but also distorted. And then once we have that distorted oval, we are going to taper it off. So it's not just, you know, a messed up oval. It actually starts big and then tapers off, kind of like how most muzzle flashes do, or you can do any kind of... Uh, reshaping you want with the technique I'm going to show you and then we're just going to you know fiddle with it and also change the colors to kind of look like an explosion so not black and white but red and yellow and orange so step one is making a circle is that's what we said so to do that we're going to add in a gradient texture this is probably the fastest way to do it hook this up to the surface and set this to either spherical or quadratic sphere both of them are circles so it's fine and really, it's a sphere, it's 3D, but you're only looking at a cross-section of it with this plane. So, uh, the first issue here is that this is centered on the bottom left corner, and this is because of generated coordinates. Uh, you don't need to know much about it, but what you do need to know is we want the origin to be in the center of our plane. So, you can either try to mess around with this like that, which is kind of dumb because, you know, it just updates, or we're going to change the texture coordinates to begin with. So... Make sure you have Node Wrangler. So again, Edit Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node Wrangler and enable that, which is going to let you hit Control T. So no need to add these manually and waste your time. And we are going to change from Generated Coordinates, which again, we could make these work. We could just, uh, you know, displace these so that it centers. Or what we can do is just use Object Coordinates. It's faster. Boom, centered. Um, of course, we don't want this to be touching the edge necessarily. So you can either, you know, use the Z slider. Again, this is a sphere, and now we're looking at a cross section of it as it goes up and down through the plane. Or what I like to do, edit mode, scale this up. Now it's embedded inside our plane and not touching the edges. So that is step one. Cool. Step two is turning this into an oval. Scale on the X axis. You have an oval. That's one method. You can also scale it down on the Y axis or up, I guess. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because you have more coordinates in that area now. So it effectively shrinks it. But uh, point is, I'm going to stretch it geometrically. But you could also do it in the se uh, shading sense. Okay, so that is step two. 
We've taken a circle, turned it into an oval. Now we need to distort it with some noise. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring this over. We are gonna distort it using some noise. So just a noise texture. You can use a musgrave. I don't care. <laughs> use a noise texture is uh, what I would recommend. And we need to mix these two texture coordinates together to apply to our gradient texture. You can do this in terms of mixing RGB, or you can do it in terms of mixing vectors. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do Shift A, Vector Math, and we're just gonna add that in. And we're gonna take our, you know, our object coordinates that I guess we didn't modify, so no need for this mapping. Just put that right in. Uh, we are gonna take our object and add, in other words, mix it with our noise texture. So put that in. Okay, so already we get our distortion, but again, it's no longer in the origin, and you can either, you know, control T and then move this around. I guess that actually doesn't work. We'd have to move it. We'd have to move it from here. Move this around, but that's not what I recommend. Instead, what we are going to do is the age-old trick of basically duplicating this vector math node, and then we are going to add it to, I think, negative 0.5 on all uh, dimensions. There you go. So that is the trick for recentering everything. So again, object coordinates is going to center our gradient texture, and then we distorted it and compensated for that um, shifting that happened. Okay, cool. So already we have a bunch of control over this because again, it's a noise texture node. We can control the detail, uh, make that blobby for kind of derpy uh, muzzle flashes or have it have a lot of detail. I'm going to keep it on maximum detail. And we can also affect the scale, as in how much noise is there per unit area, surface area. You know, so I'm going to keep it at around, I don't know, muzzle flashes kind of look like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So we've uh, done our, you know, distortion. But of course, this just kind of looks more like a cross section of a cloud uh, instead of a muzzle flash, which kind of tapers. So now we need to take care of that tapering, which means, at least for now, we can kind of ignore everything we did with the noise. And let's just hook this right back up to the gradient texture. So we have this oval. How do we turn it into a tapered oval? Well, it kind of sucks because it's going to involve quite a bit of math, but hopefully I'll explain it well. So we're going to start off by separating our vector, being our texture coordinates, into x, y, and z components. And then we're going to combine them right back. And we can make x go to x, y go to y, z go to z. And you're thinking, what is the point of that? Well, it's basically saying we need to mess with the stuff in between, right? I didn't just add these for no reason. So we separated it. We're going to do some stuff in between and then recombine it so that, you know, we can put it in our gradient texture and then also mess with our noise. Okay, so how do we actually make this taper off? Well, think about it. Tapering, like in this case, making it a oval that kind of turns into a cone, kind of, basically involves stretching in the y-axis, the up and down uh, vertical, in this case, axis. And also we want it to be, you know, it depends on the kind of muzzle flash you want, but you want it to be kind of the largest here and the skinniest here. So we want to do stretching on the y-axis as we move along the x-axis, right? Uh, from left to right, we want it to shrink. In other words, we need to affect the y-axis by the x-axis using something like multiplication. So let's do that. Shift A, math node. We are going to hook this up to the y-axis since that is what we are modifying. And, you know, it's set to add, so effectively this just translates. But we want multiplication. Whoops. Yep. Make sure this is set to multiply. And we want it to be affected by our x-axis. Now, this is not going to give the right result, but let's just see. Okay, so you see we are getting, you know, stretching dependent on the x-axis, but it's looking a bit weird. It's not what we want. And the reason for that is right now our x-axis looks like, you know, I guess it looks like that, where this black stuff is not just zero, it also goes negative. Okay, so let's see what this looks like again. So you can see towards zero, it stretches a lot, and then it kind of tapers off on both sides. So what we need to do is modify our x-axis so it multiplies in the way we want it to. Okay, so let's move this stuff down. So how do we actually modify this x-axis? Well, first of all, we need to take care of the negative numbers on the left, which are our product of object coordinates. Uh, we wouldn't have that if we used um, generated coordinates, for example, since this is zero and then left is negative. So we are gonna use a map range node to get rid of this negative stuff and make sure that is for the x. And effectively what the map range node does is it 
you know, maps our range. It takes some input interval, gives us an output interval, interval with like a linear interpolation, I think. Although I think Blender 2.82 now lets you choose the interpolation. Okay, basically we want our output to be, you know, numbers between zero and one, but our input also has to include negative numbers. So bring this down basically. Ooh, there you go. You can see how we took our oval, tapered it. I guess, you know, I guess that's how you do it. Okay, so we can basically just use this input uh, input interval to reshape this, but I think I'm pretty happy with keeping this at one. There we go. And now if we just, you know, kind of set everything up the way we did before, let's see. I think we need to move this over, and now instead of using object coordinates, this construction's ridiculous. Hopefully the might, oh, whatever. Um, Instead of using the object coordinates, we are going to use our, again, separated, modified, and combined uh, coordinates. So just bring this over to here, and we are going to plug this into our gradient texture. <laughs> well, it's a default cube tutorial, not a CG matter tutorial. No need to care about this stuff. Okay, so you can see how this has at least somewhat affected what this looks like. Again, we can play with the scale to get different looking results, but I think this is fine. Okay, just make sure everything is good to go. Yes object, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So now you may be asking yourself, okay, maybe it looks a bit tapered, but again, it kind of just looks like a cross section of a cloud. So we want to really enhance the look of this to look more, you know, we want to reshape it. Well, we can actually also add some manual control. So after we map ranged between zero and one, we can now alter this before we do our multiplication. So let's add a, uh, you could either do a color ramp or an RGB curves. I think RGB curves is more intuitive in this case because it actually lets us reshape this. And right now it's taking zero to one and sending it to zero to one, nothing happens. But of course we can modify this by changing our handles. And with our current setup, the whole point of this is now we can basically draw on the shape of it, if you see what I mean, right? And I guess it's kind of not intuitive the way we have this set up because when we bring this down, I guess it's not changing it. But when we bring this down, it's actually scaling things up as opposed to the uh, reverse we want. Going down means, you know, being something that's not confusing. So let's just reset this, reset this curve. And then instead of just sending this right into our multiplication, we can have it take the reciprocal. So two, the reciprocal of two is a half. So instead of scaling by two, it's scaling by a half, which is dividing by two. You probably get the point. So we are gonna set this to divide and then we are gonna take one over this. So again, it's the reciprocal, which right now looks weird, but let's just bring this all the way up. So in other words, basically this is just storing the number one and then one divided by one is one. So effectively nothing has changed. So now we can do our reshaping. We can now pull this down. I guess that would make this side skinnier. So let's pull that up and then pull this one down. And then we can you know, add a bit of a profile to this and you can just draw it. So this is where we do all our reshaping. Something like that. We can have it be a bit skinnier to begin with. Again, uh, what, how much this affects your final result kind of depends on what you choose for the map uh, range nodes. You know, you can see how that alters the result. So you just want to play around with these things and then you know get a result you want. But I'm just going for something basic. Okay, that kind of actually looks like a muzzle flash. And again, so far we can control the profile of this. We can control the noise, right? And we can, you know, also control the detail. And I don't think I talked about 4D, but we can also change this to four dimensional noise, which is a feature of 2.81 and onwards, I believe. Um, but basically this adds a fourth dimension of time, kind of. Um, really it's just a fourth dimension of whatever you want it to be. So we can just slide this around to get different variations. So already, uh, infinite choices and then we can do our reshaping. So you just want to slide this until you find a, you know, muzzle flash that you like. I'm going to go with this one. And now I guess, you know, if you're happy with your shape, again, you can, you know, mess with it, get different results. But if you are happy with your shape, uh, now we want it to look more like an explosion instead of this black and white image. And to do that, we need to go now all the way over here. So we've already messed with our coordinates and I think we could probably just group that. So let's just that, control G, and now we have all our coordinates packed in this nice little node. Again, it doesn't have any controls, but oh well. So 
basically we have coordinates effect affecting our gradient uh, texture, which is set to spherical. And now we want to recolor this. So shift A, color ramp node would probably be wise for this. And now we can uh, choose our colors. So black is representing everything that's black. White is representing everything that's white. So uh, we can change something like this to red and you can see how that's affecting it. And this is the kind of idea we want to be using for the recoloring. So um, basically the whiter it gets, the more towards the center it is of the muzzle flash, which means it's hotter, which means it's closer to yellow or white. So, so far these are fine, but we can just add another handle and we can set this handle to something like, I don't know, yellow or orange, some kind of explosion-y color. That's fine. We can also add another, and this one can be in between our orange and our um, white, which should be something like yellow, I guess. You could look at some reference, some kind of yellow. You can also play with the uh, value, how bright it is. Okay, something like that. And then we should also probably add a bit of red just because it looks cool. So in between here and here, we can choose some kind of red color that isn't as red. Okay, cool. So we got something that kind of has the right colors, but it kind of looks strange. Like look at that cutoff and all that. Um, that basically means we need to play around with the interpolation. I like to change this from linear to, I guess in this case, B spline would be okay. Yeah. And because of, yeah, because of the interpolation of B-spline, uh, one thing we need to fix is this uh, first handle. We'll just bring it over just a bit. There we go. So it doesn't have that weird uh, background. So we're just going to bring that over. Then for our next handle, we can slide that around till we like the way this looks. And then bring the black handle up a little so it kind of fades into the background instead of being this crisp edge that we had before. Something like that. And I guess we should probably play around a bit with the colors because they're looking wonky. Okay, whatever. Basically, you want to pick whatever colors you want. You get the idea. And then one more level of control we can have is before we put this into the car ramp node, uh, we can also add a bit of math, set this to multiply. And then once this loads, it's actually going to affect basically the fall off or the intensity. So you can see now we have a very bright flare that looks pretty bad or muzzle flash. Uh, because our colors are garbage. And then we have one that kind of dips to black. So you can pick the exposure you want. Oh, this is already looking a bit better, actually. Kind of like uh, the colors on this one. Play around with that. I think I'm more happy with that. So yeah, this, this basically controls the brightness of our um, muzzle flash. And then we can also control, you know, everything else. We can control the coordinates by going back into here, etc. And I guess at this point, if you're happy with your result, that's again, completely procedural. You can make as many of these as you want. Uh, to render this, I'm just gonna, you could either bake the texture, uh, which I guess is one approach, or again, add a camera above and set this to look downwards. So that is an angle of zero. And then just bring this up, something like that. Okay, that should be fine. And then we can just hit render and then you have a muzzle flash that again, you could make it better, but you have this, you can save it out into whatever directory uh, you want. And then that is procedural muzzle flashes. That is, that's the idea. You now know how to, you know, mess with texture coordinates, which is really the meat of uh, this tutorial, but also how to mess with colors, how to mess with the fall off. And I, I guess that's everything that was taught. Let's see. So this is the saved one and these are, that doesn't let me open the others. And these are some of the others. You can see I kind of went with the more fiery um, color combination. But yeah, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. That's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching.